Hello, people. Welcome to another edition of Dose of Drew, and this is Sunday Sharpenings with a sharp pal or sharp pal. A lot of people, I, I originally did sharp haul, but uh, I'm pretty sure this is the sharp pal. And there's this this stone's getting a lot of attention recently. This is a two-sided diamond stone. Let's see if I can find it. There it is. With the 325 and 1200. I forget the 325 micron, but the 1200 is a 9 micron, much like the DMT. And a spoiler alert, the reason it's not in the case is because I actually have a two-sided DMT in here as well. That is the extra extra fine 8000 and the extra medium extra fine 4000 mesh i think that's like four micron and two micron or one micron something like that uh, it comes with a sharpening guide it has let's see 14 17 20 and 25 i do not recommend 25 that's that's 25 degrees per side means that the overall included angle is more than 45. So I, I honestly don't recommend it. Uh, maybe for an axe or something like that, but I still I still wouldn't recommend it. It puts a lot more uh, stress on your edge as far as going through things. So yeah, that, that's but it's there. If you if you have something that's a tool like that, or there might be chisels or something that like that kind of. Angle on a 25 on a single side, there might be some chisel type grinds that that would work, and that's okay too. But very, very nice case. It's, I, I don't, I used to use things like uh, Simple Green or some, you know, some window cleaner, some ammonia based window cleaner. I don't anymore. For those who are wondering, I've had this stone for more than a year, it has replaced almost all my other stones. The only thing I, Besides the finish, the, the polishing type uh, DMT I showed you before, I do have an Atoma 140 for really chewing up. If I need to really like get a whole new bevel or something like that on there, if I need, if I have a big chip, the 140 just chews up the thing. So we won't go through that too much. Just want to give you an idea of the diamond stones. But those all came after this stone. I, I was Japanese ceramic stones before this. And when I bought this a year ago, this was like 65 bucks. I think it's like 70 or something. Now this is approximately for this one stone, the same as say for a work sharp, uh, precision elite or precision adjust the original, right? It's about the same price. But it's a really good stone. There's uh, there's a lot of other new um, reviews of this stone out there, uh, on a couple out there. One that I would recommend everyone look at if you're not already a, a fan of a different channel, it's Outdoors 55. Has some incredibly good microscopy, some up close work. Um, and he talks about there being no grit contamination from one side to the other, which is something I have ran into. If you see all the marks on this, this is not a new stone, y'all. I have sharpened so many knives on this. It feels smooth to the touch, but the diamonds are all still there. I can do a short with some microscopy work. Um, I have one of those funny little digital microscopes that I could do it, but uh, since I don't edit my videos, it's not gonna be really easy to put in here because it attaches to my phone. And for those who don't know, that's what's recording this right now. So it's kind of hard to do both. But the 325 is really good for reprofiling an edge or taking a really dull knife up to a good, and you can get pretty decent edges. It's really close to 400, and there's plenty of people who like a 400 grit as their edge, especially if you do a lot of slicing, as opposed to just push cut. Uh, it, the the rougher, or, or, or uh, you know, the, the, uh, for lack of a better term, the rougher a bevel and edge gives you a lot of slicing capability if you have a really nice apex, which this allows you to get. Um, in fact, I liked this so much, I got a Sharpal, Sharpal. Uh, they have another tool that allows you to do, strangely enough, recurves and serrated. And it's a six, 600 grit, both are 600 grit has this fan, this, they all come loose, right? So you can change this around, use it in different stuff. Has the same quality as this stone. Been really impressed by the quality that these guys put out. Um, and the, 
if you use it right, if you don't put too much pressure on it when you're sharpening with the diamonds, you're not going to see a lot of diamond tear out, right? The, the polycrystalline diamonds break. There's a break-in period for every diamond stone because they overcoat in diamonds. And then those little tiny pieces will break off to get a more even smooth. You don't have that extra roughness. The only one that I have yet to find that with is the Atomas. And that's what, they have a whole different process. If you don't know the Atomas, you look at that. Well, let me see if I can get that even somewhat close. You can see all the little dots as opposed to just the straight even coverage. It's almost like a micro dot for those of you who are fucking hippies. <laughs> I don't mean that kind of micro dot. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so it, it's a great stone. And the nine micron fine side Oh my goodness, this is one of my favorite, favorite sizes. The 1209 micron diamond is fantastic for kitchen knives. It's, it's great. You can strop on a higher stone. You can strop on, strop on something or, or burr removal or something on something like the 4000 or the 8000 diamond. And it's really incredible. It's just for me, in my opinion, the 9 micron finish, the, the 1200 finish, um, in the diamond when you have an actual micron. The nine micron finish is fantastic. It's just a little bit finer than like the thousand grit. For those who don't know, there's a couple of easy rules of thumb to kind of remember where you're at. A 12, a 1200 grit is generally, this is rules of thumb because there's actually a range and, it, and different grits are different. But just as a rule of thumb, a 1200 grit is about a nine micron a 900 grit is about a 12 micron so that there's a cool little thing right there and 800 is about 16 to 18. Um, 4,000 is about six micron 6,000 is about four micron <laughs> right so and these, these are Japanese international standards um, but a lot is different per brand but just as a rule of thumb that's about it. You start getting into like the 220s and stuff you're looking at things that are like 160 microns like huge. Um, but it does start to, you know, get up there. You start getting 600s or like 25 or 40. It, 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 it starts getting weird. But there's a couple of nice little islands there on the higher end that kind of give you an idea of where you're at within the micron range. And for those of you who don't know, who don't understand metric, a micron is 1,000 nanometers. So you start getting into some really small stuff. I have, there's pastes and stuff. When you start getting into that point one where you get to like... 0.25 you start getting into these nanometer things you're 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 really starting to get into some really strange things where you get um, things like diffraction grading stuff where you have rainbows you know at a certain you, especially if you get down into like a microscope level like you can kind of see there's a bit of a rainbow effect on some of these smaller ones and it might it's very subtle you can see some color change as you go. It depends on the light that you're, you know, looking at and all that, looking through and all that sort of stuff. You can see some of it. I mean, for real, you're talking about red colors that are in like the 440 nanometer range. So point, it's pretty small. But anyway, so it's it's a really nice finish. The 325, it's just rough enough on the hand that you can tell, and it just cuts nicely it's nice and even there's an even coating of diamonds it feels great i'm not here trying to do a sharpening tutorial at the moment um but yeah like even taking something like a you know a factory knife one of the best things about doing it by hand is that you just have to match the edge and then keep it you don't have to reprofile the factory edge. They tend to have a constant angle on factory edges and things like swing arm uh, sharpening systems and such. They tend to have to reprofile it because they don't match everywhere on the thing. So doing it by hand can be, can be really cool and it can be easier and also faster. It's really nice if you need to, if you want to reprofile your knives via a work sharp or a KME or a TS Prof or all sorts of other things out there, you know, a TS Pro F or whatever they pronounce it as. There's lots of those swing arm types. And the longer the swing arm, you guys, and I don't mean like the throw of the arm, I mean from the base out to where you hold the knife. That's the radius you really want to look at. So the longer that is, the the uh, less sharp the curve, right? It's not instead of being like that, it starts getting, you know, more, more towards flat. 
So the less it'll happen on a really significant curved knife, uh, something like a, a drop point like the you know Mordex, where it has a nice curve and also a sharp curve, those are two different radii. So yeah, if you want, want to watch some of the other videos on that, and I have another video that just talks about you know how that works. Uh, I, I don't know how to edit and post in there. I'm not learning before this video posts, so that's just how it's going to be. But it's really inexpensive. You can find this on Amazon for a pretty decent price. Um, and yeah, it, it's one of the best values out there. For the for less than the price of two Shapton Kuru, Kurumakus, which right up there with King Stones are some of the best values you can get, especially if you want Splash and Go, it, it beats the Kings by far. Um, it, it's just really, really good on a value. And it's very well done. Very, very well done. The quality is high. Um, it's just really, really hard to knock what the stone is. Like I said, I've used, you can see the stains from this thing being around. There's there's oil, there's some grit. I probably should clean this with a like a plastic brush, a dish brush or something and some soap. But I it, it tends to, when, you, when I tend to sharpen, it tends to come up. Any sharpening tutorials I'm gonna have on, on anything that's harder than like D2, maybe m390 you can get m390 on some on some uh, uh, uh aluminum oxide stones the, the normal like uh japanese stones and stuff like that they have aluminum oxide as well as some other things corundum there's a lot of stuff in there there's some quartz depends on the stone um but yeah you can you can get pretty freaking awesome on this uh it's hard to really keep going on about this without showing you this will be in there but yeah anything lower than that you have standard like kitchen knife steels that are you know maybe sg2 or s35 vn at the highest anything that's going to make a good kitchen knife steel <coughs> excuse me will sharpen well not only on this but will sharpen pretty well on uh, normal ceramic stones so it, it's gone a lot going but if you want things like magna cut s45 vn or you're going harder, you know, you got the S110Vs, or one of my personal favorites, the S90Vs, you want diamonds. You can sharpen really hard M4 on, you know, standard oxide stones. It's just hard. <laughs> and it takes a while. Uh, and honestly, diamonds have an even feel you don't have to flatten them right at, at worst you have to take like a brillo pad with some some soap or like some simple grain or even some window cleaner you want you can got to be careful of using water especially if you start having holes in your coverage like if you look you can see just with a quick shine there's no holes in the diamonds there right there's diamond coverage everywhere and it's nickel plated nickel doesn't tend to rust nickel doesn't tend to oxidize um, so it's the, the nickels on there. There's some people out there who think it might be chromium plated. I'm pretty sure these are nickel electro plated. Um, not only is it easier, it's nickel's a tougher material. Chromium, not so much. It tends to be brittle. Um, while as nickel can be definitely far tougher uh, when it comes to it. It's not as hard, but you don't need it to be hard. You need it to be tough. The diamonds are the hard part. The nickel is the tough stuff. And it makes a nice, makes a nice little combo for those who are wondering this is the same kind of material that you use on lapidary, lapidary stones which is if you're going to grind diamond if you want to polish diamond you use this kind of stuff you use like diamond pieces uh, electroplated with nickel so if this can grind a diamond it's good enough to grind your steel it's a matter of whether you're doing it right okay you don't need to do high pressure so without going into a sharpening tutorial leave something down in the comments if you want a sharpening tutorial definitely have some knives i can throw on there i have a couple of kitchen knives pocket knives i'll even uh do a s110v this this still he may even be able to see on the edge let's see if i can get it i don't know if you can see yeah that might not be still the factory edge let's put it that way still the factory edge so i can i there's some sharpness to be done there I don't know if you can see, like, I don't know if it's as obvious on camera that there's different heights to the secondary bevel on there. Right, that one's a little bit shorter than that side. 
it's more noticeable in hand, but a little bit, I don't want to say uneven from the factory, but it could be just, you know, oops, a little bit off one way or the other, where you have a, where it was just pushed you know, a little bit more grinding on one side to the other. But I'll, I'll do that tutorial. In the meantime, this is really hard not to recommend, especially for people getting into, if you have super steels or you're just getting into a sharpening and you don't want all of the care that goes with a lot of the Japanese type water stones or the, the soaking stones, you know, the kind that you have to sit in water for 15 to 30 minutes and let them dry for, for at least three freaking days. There's a lot of maintenance that goes with a good Japanese water stone, even if it's splash and go. You wanna flatten them, you wanna try and keep them. You don't have to keep them super flat if you're not trying to make the absolute in most incredible edge. You just need it to be good enough for your kitchen, right? You need it to cut tomatoes, onions, all that stuff. You don't necessarily have to have it flat, but the nice thing about a diamond stone, you don't have to flatten them. They come flat. They, it's a matter of what, how good the, you know, the steel is that they put these things on there. Some of them have aluminum. I highly, highly, in fact, I believe the uh, Atoma is a plate that's steel and nickel coated sitting on top of an aluminum block. And the reason I say that is because if you were to look at these two in thickness, the Atoma is definitely thicker, but it's also lighter. So that makes me think it's more aluminum than steel. All right. Uh, haven't tested it. I don't have metal testing material. But I really want to go over it. The Sharpal Dual Stone, the Extra Fine 1200 and the Course 325 right there. Man, much cheaper than DMT. I'm, I'm a fan of DMT stones and their ability to make good diamond coating stones, but they're not inexpensive. They're not cheap. I don't want to call them cheap because they're high quality and you pay for it. But how Sharp Pal is able to do this, they're the only ones I've seen that at this level have this kind of quality and you can get a double coated stone for the price of one stone. Um, it's weird to call it a stone. For the price of one plate, we'll say, for a diamond plate, you, you can pretty much sharpen anything, right? You can go to the 325, get yourself a nice apex and, and a good smooth bevel, a nice even bit, and then flip it over and finish it off on the extra fine 9 micron 1200, and then strop it. You can strop it on something that's just plain leather. I don't recommend it. I always recommend using a compound to load up your strops. I have several, including diamond compound, which I'll be doing uh, the type of uh, compound I use, the diamond paste that I use. Uh, my particular favorites, there's lots out there. I have not tried them all, would be happy to. Um, but yeah, I use diamonds on my strops. In fact, just to give you an idea, there's the Hootsuls I've seen before. That has a five micron paste on it. Just load with a little bit. And Sharp Pal, Sharp Pal even has their own straps. That's a five micron, as you can see, very well used. And that is a two micron, right? So it's, it's they have decent stuff. They have, for lack of a better term, pretty high quality at a very, like probably the most competitive pricing structure out there. The kind of pricing structure you only get from uh, manufacturing in China. This is not an American manufactured bit. Take that as you will. For some people, it's not a big deal. Um, for others, you, they just literally can't afford American made stuff, uh, which is terrible. That's There's a whole economic discussion to be had when your own uh, consumer base can't buy the products made in your country because the, the, uh, Pricing structure is higher than the in income structure. There's a whole economic discussion to be had there. We won't go into that right now. It's just as a matter of mention, it's just a reality that some people have a hard time affording um, American-made stuff. That's both a matter of market pricing and pay schedules. So is what it is. It's just really high quality, guys. They do a really good job. And that's, it's enough that, as you saw, I had the strop, I have thing. When it comes to affordable diamond plates, Sharp Pal is the best value I found. Hands down, best value I've ever found. 
this isn't gonna be the normal, like, you know, I would love to do the damn nice, the design, aesthetics, mechanics. It, they did a really good job. And it's probably, if you only wanted one stone, you're like, I can only afford one stone to learn on, get this one. You can re-grind, you can, you know, you get chips, you get extraordinarily dull, you get rollovers, anything like that. The 325 will reprofile that apex with a quickness. Um, if you have good form technique, again, any tutorials on sharpening, there's tons of them out there on the internet, you guys. But if you want to see uh, my tutorial, by all means, throw it down in the comments. But uh, yeah, it's, if you, both for people who already have skill or people who are just learning, this is a fantastic stone. It's not going to mess you up with the grit. So if you're just learning, this is a great stone for you to get an idea of what the feel is like without having to worry about flattening, without having to worry about stone maintenance. You can use these dry. There, in fact, I have stopped using any lapping fluid or even other fluids while I do it. It just hasn't been necessary. I probably still could. I just don't. They, there's no need for it. So, you know, it that being what it is, there's, there's nothing nothing too, too concerning there, right? In fact, let me see if there's anything I can throw on here. There's a... Huh. I'll do a quick extra fine look. It's just really good. I can't, all that, all that marking on there, that's just, it's sitting around and being used quite honestly a lot. Um, it's probably my favorite stone. It comes with this fantastic holder, um, lots of space. It's a good tall. <laughs> In fact, let me see if I can't give you an idea here. The total, total gap is about two and a quarter inches, about two and an eighth, just just over two inches from the top of the plate to the bottom of the case. So you get a lot of clearance for your hands while you're sharpening. There's a lot of room for your, your knuckles and it maneuvers. And while there's a lot of people that use the bridges and stuff like that, they don't have as much gap. So I actually like this case and I don't use my bridge. Uh, for those who don't know what a bridge is, this is a standard stone bridge. Just some rubber bits that screw in it and allows it to, you know, you can have a little bit of support there. Boom, right? There's not nearly as much clearance on this. Not nearly, right? So yeah, I actually like this more than I like my uh, standard Waterstone bridge. It does a fantastic job on it. Um, so yeah, I, I could sit here and gush a little bit more, you guys. Highly recommended the Sharp Pal uh, Dual Stone, the Course 325 Extra Fine 1200. There's a couple of other um, reviews of this out there online. I highly recommend you look at them. I'll put a, uh, a link to Outdoors 55 channel on there or at least mention them in the in the description part uh, so that you guys can, can check it out and go over and look at the link or go over and look at that channel. Lots of great stuff there. Recent review of this stone where he has the same thing. This is an incredibly good stone. I have gone through some of the cheap ones. I've had, uh, I haven't had all the DMTs, but I obviously have had some. And while you can get a really good value on DMT, for the quality, I haven't found a better value than this. If anyone knows a better value than this, and, and there's a reason why, by all means, throw it in the comment. But in my experience, this is one of the best value sharpening stones out there. Without doing a whole lot of, you know, showing. In fact, if I was to do one, it would probably do be my 10V harpoon here. This would be a fantastic knife to sharpen on the 1200, right? Make sure... Dun, 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 dun. Right. To get an idea, we just it's just you can hear it. It is so nice. So freaking nice. But anyway, that's about there is on this edition of Sunday Sharping. The Sharp Pal Dual Stone. You can find it. If you just enter Sharp Pal on Amazon, you can find it. You can probably find it on a Sharp Pal website. But it's 325 and 1200. I want to say this is like a 60 micron, might be 80, a 60 micron and a nine micron or something like that. It's, it's pretty close. Very, very good stone, very well done. I've had this for more than a year, 
probably actually close to two. It's 2024. Pretty close to two, I would say, honestly. Um, and it has sharpened everything from hatchets to S90V to 9CR18. I have sharpened just about everything on this stone and it still does really good. Don't use too much pressure. Let the diamonds do the cutting and you're going to have a long life out of any diamond stone. And this one is no exception. So I'm going to leave it there. You guys tell me in the comments what you think about this. I, I can also do some on the, uh, on the Japanese water stones, the Choseras, the Kurumakus, the Kings. Those are the ones that I have. I can also look at some others. Um, but in the meantime, y'all, you guys have a great day rest of your weekend. This has been your dose of Drew Sunday Sharpenings and the Sharp Howl Doing Stone. Dual Stone. Doing Stone. We're doing it too. The Sharp Howl Dual Plate, the Dual Diamond Plate, 325 and 1200. Fantastic value. Highly recommended if you're looking to get into uh, hand sharpening or if you're already a, a, a experienced you know, hand sharpener. This is a fantastic value. If, you, if you're looking for something that you can really maximize your dollar value on for a really high quality stone, this one's the one to beat. This is the champ out there right now as far as I'm concerned. So go ahead, take this video, watch it twice, comment as much as you like, be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your Dose of Drew. I am said Drew, and you guys have a great rest of your night.